This is the Criterion Creeps podcast. And tonight we're talking about Au Revoir, Les Enfants from 1987, directed wow. by Louis Mal. Wow. Pretty au, good uh, French. Au Revoir, Les elef- enfants. Elefants. Oh, Elefante. How, how about Elefante? Oh, Elefante. Au Revoir, That's... Les Enfants. Tells a heartbreaking story of friendship and devastating loss concerning two boys living in Nazi-occupied France. At a provincial Catholic boarding school, Mm -hmm. the precocious Mm -hmm. youths enjoy true camaraderie until a secret is revealed. Based on events from writer-director Maul's own childhood, the film is a subtle, precisely observed tale of courage, cowardice, and tragic awakening. Damn. Is it all those things? Let's find out. RJ. Oh, shit. This is number three. Number three in, in, in the three films by Louis Mal, Criterion Collection. <laughs> Spine 327, I guess. The, the big boy. This is the whole enchilada. Wait, those last movies had, uh, those are the same directors? All, all one man. Are you sure? Well, Criterion. John Criterion has lied to me before. Well, that's what I'm saying. It could be the case now, too. Like, are you sure? Okay, well, whatever. Well, RJ, what, what have you learned about the French people this week? What have I learned? Yeah. We, 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 um, yeah. I mean, I know that they go, oh, oh, do we? I know a lot about that. A lot of baguettes. Um, some about being goofy and carefree and spontaneous, you know? Mm-hmm. I heard, I saw that they loved reading. Love reading, love jam. Apparently, are you oh, a big yeah. jam man? I am. I love jam. Stra- what's your uh, What's your go to jam? Strawberry or apple jelly? Apple jelly. Damn, girl, you crazy. Yeah. I, uh, I'm I, don't, a, I'm I don't. I don't think they make apple jam. There's definitely jelly? apple jelly. Yeah, but I'm a bit, strawberry yeah. uh, jam is pretty good. Hmm. Uh, strawberry is pretty good. Apple's not bad. I'm a big raspberry jam guy myself. Raspberry. Eh? I'm a big uh, raspberry. What about? How do you feel about blueberry? Blueberry? Uh, I like blueberries, and I like blueberry stuff, but it's probably never the first jam I'm going to go for. I see. Um, I, I can't recall in this movie, do we get, is the jam identified? The jam? Yeah. No, but it's... um. Is there currants involved? <sighs> it's definitely like a red or like a purple. No. <sighs> ah, shit. And it's a highly sought after item. It is. It's a hot commodity. It is. It is. Okay, so... This is it, the final movie, and as I mentioned last week, this is the movie that seems that most people seem to be the most positive of, of the three movies. Allegedly. Um, definitely, they are. Definitely? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I yeah. think I, I'd be willing to, to go to trial on that one. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, that's... Yeah, that's my... It's just your well, reputation, well, Luckily, I am a character, so it's not real. Yes. Yes, I understand. Makes sense. So this film, a.k.a. English title, Goodbye, Children. Mm, Where are they going? Makes makes me think of uh, Chef from South Park. Oh, when he has to go back to his planet? Well, no, he says, hello, children. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's right. You don't watch South Park. No, I don't. Not really. Want to hear uh, an anecdote? Uh, It depends. So... Quentin Tarantino uh, got the title for his film, Reservoir Dogs, because a patron went to the video archives rent video store back Mm -hmm. in the old days when he worked there. And he, this, he's, you know, Tarantino maybe recommended this movie to the guy. And the guy misheard him saying, Au revoir, les enfants. And he heard Reservoir Dogs. That can't be true. Au revoir. I mean, I don't doubt that he says that, but there's no way that that's how that happened. Au revoir, Au revoir les enfants. Re- reservoir, reservoir, reservoir dogs. Au revoir. So did he never follow up on it, though? He was never like, oh, yeah, let me see that movie. He was like, oh, it's not called Reservoir Dogs. Well, I'm sure he, he clarified it at that moment for the patron, but for the, for the customer at the store, but maybe he got stuck in his head. Um, or he's a storyteller. Well, I think he, I think he's a storyteller, Jarrett. 
But I'm not quite sure. Well, but... he knows. He knows also a storyteller. Who's that? Louis Malm, and he's telling the story oh. of his own life experience. Louis Malm. Uh, were you aware of that when you were watching the movie? Uh, I mean, has this guy made a movie that isn't based on his life? It seems. Well, I mean, everything but having sex with his own mother. That definitely I... didn't happen. Allegedly. And I don't know about, I'm not so sure about Lacombe Lucien. That doesn't seem to, uh, he would have been uh, 11, I guess, technically, still. Cause he it, could cause, have been one of those horses. La- Lacombe Lucien is like happening in his own, his own neck of the woods. Yeah, I just mean like everything about this dude. He he's always like, yeah, it's uh, it relates to my life somehow. So like even Lacombe Lucien, he's, it's probably like, oh, there was a guy I knew who did that. Well, they, they, I mean, he probably heard about a guy who did that. It, yeah. Because it is based in the real world. So I don't think anything this guy's ever done isn't about him somehow. Right. I mean, one could say all 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 works of fiction are somehow autobiographical. If they're art, yeah. But you know what else people say about art? Uh, that it's the only thing that's real. Well, depending on who you ask. Yeah. So we got Julian our protagonist. Mm-hmm. He, he is being sent off at the train station to Catholic private school. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of often it's like remote village, kind of in the, the mountains mm-hmm. and away from Paris during world war two. So I suspect that this is probably fall 1943 and the story mm-hmm. wraps up. The last beat is like after Christmas and uh, it's 1944. Mm-hmm. And to, I guess to place that in terms of last week's movie, Le Comme Lucien, uh, that is taking place during the summer of 44. Um, are you more of a winter or a summer? Uh, winter. I like winter yeah. more. You're definitely a winter. Yeah, you can always yeah. put, you always put another sweater on. Yeah, you're definitely a winter. I shouldn't have even asked. I don't uh, know what I was thinking. How would you describe? Hey, I know. You know, mm-hmm. you gotta think sometimes, RJ. I, I'm aware. You, I'm you aware. Gotta think. So, uh, Julian, kind of uh, similar to other protagonists um, in that we've seen, particularly Murmur of the Heart, mm-hmm. a pro- another precocious hero mm-hmm. um, who's also somewhat of a young genius, and he loves to read. Do you think they, that? that this, that's obviously Louis Mal. L- Louis Mal really liked to read. Yeah, but it's like that thing. What was that other movie you watched? Was it? Um... What was that dog movie we watched that one time? My Life as a Dog? Yeah, is it? Remember when he was like, he's like, every woman wanted me. Every one of them. And in, in all of Louis Maul's movies, he's like, I'm so fucking smart. Even my mom wanted to hang out with me. You know what You know what he means, right? Well, she, she really um, uh, f- was finicky over him. The mom in this one is uh, similar. No. Yeah. So kind, kind of. I, I was reading yeah. the uh, the Criterion essay that was like... You can read? Sight and sound. I know. Wow. Well, it helps me with these subtitle films. Uh, and sure. he kind of mentions like, yeah, there's sort of like this... It's more ironic. There is there is a tension between mother and son here once again, saying that she wishes that she could come with him to the school, that she could, that she could dress up like a boy and, and, and go with him. And then and this person's like... Well, you know, and it becomes you know ludicrous. This image of this shapely Mademoiselle mother mm-hmm. uh, slipping into a t- into a tight young boy's outfit. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, who wrote that essay? <laughs> I don't know. A guy. Ugh. A guy wrote it, and I just went. Mm, okay. uh, I'm not sure if uh, I'm buying what you're selling, Mac. He said, "Pal, pal." He said, "I don't know, pal." Yeah. <laughs> So in a lot of ways, this movie I, I find a little bit harder and looser to like pin down, even compared to the last two movies. It sure. feels even more just kind of matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not the most, um, yeah, the plot barely matters. It barely registers because mm-hmm. I, I have a note here of school days, uh, mm-hmm. but it's like these scenes kind of just happen in and out. There is sort of a structure. Of yep. an arc because there's the build up of the reveal as our mm-hmm. uh, you know astute Julian begins to make deductions about the the true identity of his this new kid this Jean kid his, his rival well his rival because he's uh, better at playing the piano 
than him. Mm-hmm. Seems to be no math a little bit better. He's like, oh, this who's this guy? I think he is. Even knows how to read a little bit better. Just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Or he has better books or something. I think that's what it was, right? Yeah. He had he had be- more books than uh, than he had or something. Mm-hmm. And he's like that piece of shit, right? So, but we get like kind of uh, bits and pieces of the other students at the school. Uh, I I didn't think it was too. I, I don't think the movie was trying to trick anybody into being like, oh, I bet you don't see that coming. Like, mm-hmm. you, I think it's kind of evident uh, from the way the story's set up and the way the adults kind of move around. Yeah, I think the the audience is probably like, oh, I bet you, I didn't think I, I I think I know what this is about, even if I haven't read the synopsis yet. And you're just mm-hmm. kind of watching this small story of uh, em- em- encroaching horror of uh, war and uh, and genocide, RJ. Which which side? Genocide. Oh yeah, that's the bad one, right? That, that's one of the bad ones. Yeah, yeah. There's lo- yeah. most of the sides are not good. What about um? Yeah. Go on. No, take, nothing. T- take a take a minute. What's a side? What about uh, side uh, plate? That's a different word. Well, we were talking about the sides, right? <laughs> what about side dish? Uh, you know I mean? Those are fine. Those yeah. aren't, but those aren't, you know, killings. What about spermicide? Well, those, those aren't wrongful killings. So, oh, RJ, he's going to gloss over that. that. Sper- yeah. sper- spermicide, I mean, depends what your goal is. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, this is also a story about trading homemade jam with um, kind of crippled scullery boys. Yes. Well, what was your take on that guy? Uh, he had cool hair. He did have cool hair. I thought the same yeah. thing. I, I know. I think you've been trying to rock the Joseph. You think I got the... Okay, well, what do you think here? Do you think I got... No. The Joseph? No. What, what uh, about that? No, that's... Uh, I, I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm going yeah, this, for this thing. This, this this guy here, this is the guy you don't give your uh, Nintendo friend codes to. That's what oh, I'm, that's, come that's, on. that's what I'm saying here. All I all I would do is be fun and supportive oh. to whoever was on the other end of that. Dear Lord, so um, <laughs> uh, here's here's just some notes yes. about the scenes that we we come across. So there's uh, yes. what I call battle sticks. <laughs> oh. With uh, the stilts, yeah, the stilts. Oh, it's awesome. Stilt battle. There's some jousting, and yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's like pretty. Like, man, they would never let children do anything like that ever again. No, but uh, 1944, <laughs> like you, these boys, you know, you gotta let them get their energy out because if they don't get their energy out, Jerry, you know where they're gonna put it, right? So uh, these kids are getting slammed, oh. battle stick style. Wow. And, uh, can you can you tell me more about what you're saying here? If you don't let them get it out, they're going to put it somewhere, and so they're slamming it in. Well, I, I just mean if if there's no recess where these boys can play battle sticks. Blow off a little gonna, steam. Blow off a little steam. They're going to go into uh, the classroom, and uh, maybe they're not going to pay attention to their studies. I see. And that's what's really important. It's, it's, a, strat- it's, a, it's a strategy. It's a Studies in uh, the catechism. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they got to have the catechism. Yeah, so we get some battle sticks. Yes, we do. And, uh, yeah. That's I don't know. It's there, pretty cool. There, there's some rivalries. There's some yeah. Uh, but there's like not only the physical battle, but there's also a literary battle about I or, or an historical battle. Like I know more historical references than you, and that's the role I'm playing. I'm a knight from even older ago, and it's kids like let's that was go. Pretty dorky. Oh, it is, but it is yeah. the um, it is all part of the one upsmanship that's going on. This of this vague uh, rivalry. Yeah, I thought that was the the dorkiest part for sure. I was like, oh, there's the Jarrett's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would have been the kid on the stick just being like, Burr. <laughs> and then you'd be like, I am Otho Lionheart, ruler of this realm. And I would have I would have called you a nerd and pushed you over. Mm-hmm. You know, that's still allowed, right? Uh, push uh, assaulting people, nerd uh, bashing. Oh, assault. Uh, yeah, you have to I'll have to consult with my lawyer. Okay. Okay, I'll ask the path, yeah, my uh, pastor. You can go ask the officer over there. Yeah, yeah, I'll ask him. I'll ask him. Okay. Yeah. So what happens after battle sticks? Um. So my note here was Joseph regarding, uh, yeah, again, the scullery. Because I love saying that word. Because how often do you get to talk about that? What about skullduggery? 
It's, ooh, well, that's a different word altogether. That's SK as opposed to SC. Ah, I see. So I, I wrote, uh, Joseph will be playing the role of Lucy and Lacombe this evening. As, yes. it, as it turns out later in the film. I'm trying to jump in the gun here a little bit. So a little bit. one of the things that happens is so all these all the these little like middle class bougie kids who get sent off to to you know their nice little co- really cold Catholic school that cuts a mm-hmm. lot of corners but it's going to teach it's like it's it's safe it's away from the cities where safe. things are a little touch and go and they're a bit, mm-hmm. but they get sent treats uh nice the fancy little things and these kids are like well fuck I can trade this for smokes. Ah uh, yes, yes. What would what would you trade for smokes? What would I trade for smokes? Well, I what would be the? I, well, I don't have. You're... I don't have anything. But what would be like? Say you got sent to like a boarding school. What would be the thing that your family would send you that you could trade for smokes? What would they send me? Because like I know uh, mine would be like cabbage rolls or something. They'd be like, here's a, here's a fresh pa- patch uh, of cabbage rolls for you, and I'd trade. Uh, I'd trade those in for smokes. My my, my dad's all about cabbage rolls. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, cabbage rolls are awesome. Yeah. If you could have them and smokes, you'd be no. living the best life. But Right. You know what I mean? You, got, you have to have some heat for those, though. I don't know if you want For the cabbage those. rolls? Yeah, you don't want that You don't want that room temperature. Depends how tight t- times are, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know? But we'll so, see. Yes. Yes. Vern. <laughs> so, Vern, yes. um, uh-huh. the, uh, so there's kids, they trade for other things from Joseph. Uh, be it smokes or marbles, which marbles. I, well, I want to point out that uh, while Joseph was showing off this marble to Julian for a, uh-huh. for a trade of this jam, fucking Julian just kept the marble. He just, well, yeah, and jo- he walked Joseph away. Tries to say something, but everyone's shitting on Joseph all the time. They're like pushing him over, calling him like cripple and stuff, and mm-hmm. making fun of him and stealing his shit. Yeah, and then of course the. It by the by stories end. This becomes the kind of it's it's kind of a trope, I guess. It's mm-hmm. a, it's a beat of uh, humanity where th- this person. So he, what basically what he's doing? He is stealing. He is stealing from the kitchen, from the larder, and yeah. tra- trading it off, and then he's selling it on the black market, making a little bit of extra scratch, a little bit of trade. Mm-hmm. And the, the priests, they're just like, nah, we're not having any of that. We, we got to fire you. We don't want to, but. You forced our hand. We can't. There's nothing much we can do about it. And this kid's like, yeah. well, where am I going to go? <laughs> like, I've got nowhere to well, live. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have anywhere to live. And his big thing, too, is just uh, he's like, everybody's stealing here. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm not he's, the only one. Yeah. He's like the the lady who's the cook. He's like, she steals more than I do. He's like, fire her. Yeah. But um, no. Nope. But, yes. Yeah, so this this decision, inevitably, because, of course, it's the 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 head priest the, the of the of the monastery um mm-hmm. who is also not only fires him while well, he's going to get revenge against him um and along the way there'll be some uh innocent victims mm-hmm. so uh other notes i've got uh, the story is again very straightforward uh julian smart kid he's got some vague uh competition in this uh jean kid and you get to kind of see what life was like being in 1944, you know, kind of like well-to-do kid in your little Catholic monastery school during World War II. Mm-hmm. Um, life's not great. You get you get to watch one movie every eight months, and, mm-hmm. and it's Charlie Which, and it's some some Charlie Chaplin, RJ. You, you uh-huh. watch you watch The Immigrant, where we do get some full-on knee slapping laughs. I uh, I don't know if you saw, but this is a uh, part of. Uh, did you watch this on the channel? I did. It's uh, part of the supplements, so I actually watched this bad boy this week. I, I threw it on as well, RJ. Yeah, yeah. I watched it because I uh, I had a cat on me when this movie ended, <laughs> okay. and I couldn't get up. And I said, "Well, let's see what else is on here." Yeah. And I saw that it was a cool twenty now, minutes, now, and it, I went, is "Absolutely." This, is this the first Charlie Chaplin you've ever seen? No, no. First in a long time, though. No okay. yeah. I've seen Chaplin's before, but um, it's uh, I haven't watched a Chaplin movie in I might I'd say at least ten years, okay. probably. Yeah, yeah. I've seen them, but I couldn't tell you which one. Uh, was your cat in danger while you were watching this from mm. knee slapping? 
Oh, like, well, well you, we, short, we, 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 we start slamming your hand uh, onto your thigh. Go, oh, holy shit. This is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. There's definitely some Shortland. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I uh, he, Comedy, we've mentioned many times. Mm-hmm. Uh, dating, dated comedy and things like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, I know Chaplin's got, uh, he's got some uh, some timeless stuff in there too. Like right. some of his bits. It's like, oh, I, yeah. this still works today. I get you. I get you. Yeah. So, yeah. And then uh, what happens is Julian starts figuring out, this kid, There's uh, he doesn't know any of the words to our Catholic mumbo jumbo crap. Yes. He's, he's not singing along. And uh, I'm going to take a look at his, at his personal belongings, and I'm going to go mm-hmm. grab one of these books, and I'm going to like do some trickery of looking in a mirror, or looking at this name that's written in backwards, and see Gene Keppelstein. What's up with that mirror backwards mirror stuff? Was that common, or I mean, that's just that's was it just for I'm, secrecy. I mean, that's just like when you when you're a big nerd, RJ, you learn all mm-hmm. about you le- you learn all about the tricks because you read books. But why even do it at all if it was like such a secret? Do you know, because he's mean? trying to he's trying to f- figure it out because there's things that are just not lining up to him. His observations, okay, that the, pre- okay. the the priest kind of move them around. That they don't want them the, these like these other two boys kind of yes. being seen. There's something there, the, the, the there's a secret world of adults that's uh, transpiring. Mm. So interesting. Uh, this is when he realizes, huh? This kid's Jewish. Yeah. He's got he's got candles under his bed, and and he has his own little uh, chant that he does. Um, he goes to take communion, and then the priest has a, a one of those like whoa 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 whoa. I'm not sure <laughs> why. I'm not sure. Uh, there, what there's the... a thing. Okay, there, it's a thing. It's a stupid thing, but it's a thing. Well, it's like uh, don't, I mean, don't, don't eat the cracker. Well, I mean, it's not a cracker, Jared. It's the body of Christ. Well, I know it's it's it's, it's, can- it's, it's just the part of the cannibalism. I'm a, I'm aware yes. of its work, but it yeah. it is also a cracker, a and- Eucharist. Yeah, yeah. And I I imagine there are religions that have other things that may se- may seem strange. I bet, like you know, when Jewish people don't have uh, meats and dairy touching on plates, you'd go, well, "That's strange, isn't it?" Got to keep it kosher, RJ. But but to them, it's important, you know. You know, so uh, there there is a. I, I mean, I don't know. Obviously, there there's a reason they're like, ooh, can't give this kid yeah, one. Yeah, and then he slide steps him. It's like, well, you just outed that kid, yeah, um, uh, Friar. I mean, the thing to do for that guy would have been just hit the kid with the Eucharist. You know what I mean? That's right. Hit, hit him with the wafer. You ever but, had one of those, Jerry? Th- th- this is him. No, <laughs> I have never. So <laughs> th- th- there's uh, the bit where he's like uh, this the same this father, the, mm-hmm. the good man in this story who, of course – does bid the the children goodbye children at the the end of the film uh, who's the kind of the i guess you'd say a low key the, the hero of the story yes um he he goes on a real tear with these kids rich parents who've come for a visit and just talking about when you're dead you can't bring your money with you and your 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 clothes and your money and all your belongings are just going to rot just like you mm-hmm. are so are you saying that we should give up? No. Not oh. So, no. Uh, so maybe uh, give, give give everybody a taste, you know? Spread, of the misery? Spread the wealth. Mm, Alle- alleviate the misery. Just maybe a little bit. Oh, okay. I'll try. No. Yeah. What happens then? The dangerous stuff. Well, a dad storms off who's very offended by this. He's like, whoa. Uh, yeah. I didn't come here to be lectured. You son of a bitch. I, I like how that priest eyes. was really ripping into them. He's like, you rich sons of bitches, you're the problem. I thought it was fun. I was like, look, look at this guy. Fun. He's, yeah, I was like, these are the people keeping this place afloat. And he, yep. That's good Catholic guilt, Jarrett, where right it says, there. you're the problem. Mm-hmm. And they say, but we're here. And he says, exactly. Uh, so kind of kind of going off of that, uh, there is kind of this little ongoing bit that was also in Murmur of the Heart where you kind of have the this middle the middle class parents kind of having these little political discussions with quick asides that kind of just kind of give a snapshot of the, uh, the what's going on in the world uh, where the figure of Patane gets mentioned, who was, of course, the... Um, I don't know, like the, the 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 master, the controller of Vichy France, um, as uh, mm. discussed last week with Lacombe Lucien. Uh, 
And mm-hmm. I, I can't remember if Patan got mentioned specifically. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it sure, I mean, it I, sure looks that way. Patan. I don't think there's been an episode where we haven't mentioned pa- it. Patina. Well, yeah, it's a constant, constant uh, bringing it up. I, I mean, we're ta- when, when have we not? We're talking about it now. Here See? We are, here we are. I'm just, uh, Marshall. Marshall Philip Patane. Yeah, he's one of the best. <laughs> oh, a, par- a Baker part. Marshall Philip Patane, he's one of the best there ever. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he also see. he's from the country of Patane, or the the region of Patane. But uh, oh. yeah, he's definitely um definitely one of the best. <laughs> you know what I mean, Jer? <laughs> yeah, I, I loved how he collaborated with the Nazis. It's good. Well, he was one of the best actors, is what I'm saying. He was like one of the actors. Patain. I was just wondering if he like how he went out. He went to jail. He had a trial. Did he? Yeah. Did yeah, he, he, he wasn't I don't know I don't know uh what his uh legacy this is, but I mean according to RJ, mm-hmm. he's one of the good ones. Well, in terms of acting. The actor. The actor uh, the actor f- 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 uh, Philip Patan. I'm not familiar with uh, his work. Uh yeah, you probably wouldn't. He's in a lot of um, Jack Black movies. You probably don't know him. Okay. Yeah, you don't watch um, a lot of those. Hey, so was Louis Maul a bedwetter? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Everything in these movies is fact about his life, so he definitely was. Okay. Uh, shitty push-ups. Oh yeah, they suck at push-ups. These kids. A lot of kids suck at push-ups, though. It's hard. A lot of adults suck at push-ups. It's true. I could do about 100 in like, I don't know, a minute, but it's Good. like no big deal. Is that using the chopsticks? Uh, well, yeah, because that's increased difficulty, Jerry. If you got your two fingies on chopsticks and you're still doing push-ups, you're, you're probably a pretty good guy. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I got notes about the piano lessons where this, uh, this young woman comes by to teach piano and she kind of just zones out doesn't really do too much teaching but this mm-hmm. uh this jean kid this jean bonnet uh impresses her yeah because he he knows how to play piano what instrument do you play um hmm. none uh, I, I, I i played a mean recorder oh a, well, hot cross school. buns mm-hmm. i got gotcha, you i got gotcha. you do, 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 do. It's not Hot Cross Buns, dude. It's totally the other song. <laughs> I don't know what you're playing. <laughs> Something else entirely. Uh, no. Oh, well. that, that is definitely Hot Cross Buns. Nah, that's something else entirely. <laughs> that's another one? That's another one of the yeah. recorder classics? Yeah, that's uh, maybe Baby Beluga. Do you know that one? Uh, you... Nope. It'll be in the episode somewhere. Okay. What were we talking about? Um, we're, we're supposedly talking about this film. Au oh revoir. yeah, yeah. Au revoir. Au revoir, l'enfant. Hey, you mean Reservoir Dogs? Then we get to the public bathroom, where you gotta make sure you hide your peen. How come? You don't you don't want to show off that circumcised wiener. Oh, that is a plot point in this movie. It does come up later. It does come up later. No. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, why it's uh, he's Protestant. Yes, yeah, which I mean is an easy sell. Yeah, I'm not sure if the if that's a thing that uh, the Protestants were doing in uh, Europe was mutilating genitals, but uh, well, Google uh, Google circumcision, see what comes up. I'm good. Make sure it's an image search. Too, well, I'll, just so I'll stick to can... the how to with John Wilson on circumcision. Yeah. Oh, uh, would you? Well, about about, uh, like about protective protective covers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would you try to give it, grow it back? No. Okay. It's a, okay. it's a lost well, he cause. It's a that lost cause. Did. He didn't. Do you think it worked out for him though? No. Damn. No. Nope. I was, no. I was rooting for that no, guy. No, not even a little bit. Uh, there, oh, there, so at that point, uh, after the bathroom, after the, after everyone's having their bath, uh, that's when uh, Julian steals Joseph's marble, and also mm-hmm. soon after, Julian solves the mystery. That Jean is a Jewish kid. Yes, he is. Uh, and then there's sort of a tension there. Um, uh, and before he can really bring it up to him, the the boys, all the boys, they go on a treasure hunt. And uh, there's some some boying around, some kids getting beat up and tied up. 
because they're, mm-hmm. they're two teams vying for the treasure box. Uh, but then uh, Julian gets, he escapes. He runs, 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 runs. He gets to the rocks. He finds the path. He gets the tin and then realizes, oh, this is a really long way down <laughs> and it's getting <laughs> dark. And then he's on his way down. He runs into Jean, who also uh, got tied up and left f- left for dead, I guess. But yep. he, he managed to get out of his ropes and run off. And so now they're together. Uh, this kind of the, the whole rocks bit reminded me a little bit of Picnic and Hanging Rock. Uh, kind of. Yeah. Kinda. Like another, yeah. another 70s movie about kids in large, kind of menacing, threatening rocks. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the boys asked the other one about wolves in the woods. Uh, instead, we wind up with a boar who get, who is scareded and runs away. I, I like that boar. I was happy to see him. Yeah, he's a good boar. Yeah, he was cool. Uh, but then they get to the road and they see a car coming up. I'm like, uh oh, are we going to see some 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 Germans, RJ? We're going to see this Germans. The Germans. But we do. The and, Austrians. And they, they seem like pretty nice, okay, nice guys. Bav- one's a Bavarian. Uh, and, and he's Catholic. He's trying to like have a chit chat with these kids because um, yeah. they're scared. Um, they even give him a uh, a kraut blanket as the kids go. Yeah. It's like ah, oh, the kraut's got me. As they bring him back to the school, mm-hmm. so there's a little bit of a little bit of that. And then the, the kids are in the hospital beds, getting t- taken care of. Um, uh, Julian's eating some pate, and of pate. course he's like, hey, Gene, you want some of this? You want some of this pate? It's pork. Mm-hmm. He's like, no, I'm good. He's like, oh yeah. Is that because you're Jewish? And oh man, this is this is this is when some of the tension strikes. Mm-hmm. Are you uh, a pate guy? No. Are you? Um, I don't know if I've ever had it. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't. If I have, I don't remember. It didn't leave much like, of an impression. Yeah, like honestly, I don't know if I ever had it. Yeah. Oh well. Are you going to change that? Nah. Nah. <laughs> Not tonight, at least. Okay. Well, I mean, the grocery store is still open. You could run over there. Um, is it? No, it's closed by now. No. It's nine thirty. Grocery is closed at nine. No. When is it closed? Eleven. No, come on. Yes. Grocery grocery store can't be open till eleven o'clock. They sure are. Are you? Are you? Out of here. <laughs> Safely lit. Closing soon. Closes at ten. Look at save on. <clears throat> save on. Foods Lethbridge West. Uh, closes at ten. Okay. What about Superstore? <laughs> this is Super riveting. Store. Riveting. Lethbridge. Uh, closes at ten. Okay, they changed it. It used to be open later. Oh, is it? Is it now? COVID, they all say? COVID. But you said nine. You said nine. Oh well, I said nine. You said eleven. So we split the difference. Split we the meet difference. in the middle. Yeah. Right. Nine. So it's what's fair. Meet in the middle. It's crazy. What were we talking about? Uh, pate. Oh yeah, yeah. I wouldn't eat it, or I've never had it. So yeah. yeah. So the parents come and visit. They get yeah. they get uh, admonished by the priest for being rich assholes, mm-hmm. and then uh, mom takes her Julian and her brother, or sorry, the brother, um, who's kind of like just floating in and out, and he's really horny. Because what do you mean horny? Oh, he's well, lo- he's looking for opportunities. He's looking for a taste. He uh, he tries to he just flat out tries to kiss the piano player during the movie. Yeah. And she, she's like, oh, no, she's like, thanks. Yeah. Which, so, uh, so yeah. They, they go to the restaurant. Uh, there's these militia guys with the big puffy hats who are, uh, again, collaborators. They go and, uh, start harassing this nice old Jewish man who's just trying to have some, uh, breakfast, I guess, or have a, mm-hmm. some brunch. And he's, uh, he's a longtime patron. He is. Um, the, the concierge guy or whatever, whatever that guy's name is. He's like, he's like, this gentleman. He had been here for forty years. He says like that. And then right over there, there's some some German soldier types, who of course like there's a, a tension building up amongst the people. Who are like leave the old guy alone. And then another one's like another woman. that was like send him to Moscow. <laughs> and uh, soon enough, like one of these German soldiers is like enough of this shit. And then they're like mm-hmm. no, tell, tell these guys to knock it off. Enjoy your enjoy your lunch. 
Uh, and then the kids uh, will get to watch uh, some rousing Charlie Chaplin film, and it's about the mo- it's about the magic of cinema. RJ. Yep. Yep. And uh, what is cinema to you? Mo- moving images. <laughs> ah, like Millennium. <clears throat> Just, yes, where people get <laughs> built into dry, <laughs> covered up in drywall corpses. <laughs> Check out our Patreon for more on drywalling and how to do it correctly. Yeah, um, and then so the, the, these boys that they, they had their, they, they were fighting, uh, and then they, they become friends because that's what happens with boys mm-hmm. and, and kids. They're weird. So now they're pals. Uh, we get a bomb shelter scare where everyone's running in to get to the bomb shelter, but uh, these kids are like, "Hey, who cares? They don't even do a head count. We'll go hang out." And we'll just like have a run of the school. Everyone's hiding, and they do. Mm-hmm. And someone's like, "Ah, oh, this is like so so uh, magical." These kids, it's the calm before the storm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, before uh, Joseph's going to get called out for being a thief. Or oh, sorry, this is he's already been called out as being a thief, and they catch him coming back to steal some paperwork. He left some things, and mm-hmm. then he leaves. And then these kids have school. They're learning about how Russia is invading Ukraine. Uh, what? 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 Currently, is or oh, in 1944, RJ. Oh, okay, okay. That will that'll never happen again. And so uh, then we have uh, Christoph Waltz uh, show up, uh, or James Mason, perhaps mm-hmm. uh, as Doctor Mueller, aka Doctor Gestapo. Yes, because uh, they're they fed vids, they fed vids of not, the the Jews. They are they are in the school. The, the Jews. That's that's what they're there for. And wow. um, everyone's kind of like, oh shit. There's like not really much you can do. Some people try to escape. They're trying to run away. Uh, there's even a penis inspection thrown in. When was your last one? I haven't had the opportunity to have one. To. I don't know what happens at the schools you have gone to in your life, but uh, RJ, no, I mean you should police. make sure. You, you, uh, again, RJ, I don't know what's going on in, in, well, your, in, your, in your on your side of Creepsville, but you, that's not it's not okay. You need to tell you somebody. Not, have you not Googled uh, Creepsville police lately? Because we, we make national news about once every month or two. Yeah, uh, indeed we do. Indeed we do. So the next time that you you are thinking about that, just remember, we're we're our police are those ones. Hey, at least you don't work for them. No, I don't, which is nice. Yeah, I don't work for the police. Do you? I don't. I'm not a cop. I'm not a cop either. Off, <laughs> not, uh, officer RJ. I'm not a cop. You you you'd have to tell me if you were one. Legally, you have to tell me if you're a cop. Legally. Legally. Yep. But I'm but I'm a character on a podcast. Ah, uh, podcast law, shit. Podcast law. Specialties. So, so um, yeah, the kids are rounded up, as does as uh, the father, Monk. They're going to go away, and there's not much you can do about mm-hmm. it. And, uh, you know, final shot is uh, Julian looking out the, at the door where he last sees uh, his friend and these other people from the school get led away. And we have a little voiceover narration. I'm not sure if it's actually Louis Mall uh, doing it, saying it's like, "Yep, yeah, they uh, went to Auschwitz and were killed, uh, murdered." And uh, uh, the father he got sent off to a concentration camp where he also died. And uh, uh, yes, yeah, in, in IRL RJ, and that's it. Yeah, is the voiceover Louis Mall? You think, or is it, it just some? It might some be. Re- it could be Louis Mall. Did you think that that was like some some like surrealism? Some no <laughs> magicalism? No, I don't think it's surrealism or magic realism. You don't think that was a narrator for all the the people it, who were experiencing no, that, it that, as well? That is, that, that is literally what happened to Louis Mall. Like that is the, the same father that uh, I believe. Ah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, I thought it could have been someone else. Oh well, the more you know. The more you know. The more you know. Yeah. What are you doing over there? What's that? What are you? I'm just letting you uh, talk, talk yourself out. <laughs> well, that's the end of the. That's the movie. end of the movie. It's French. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the 
the monk, that the school headmaster, uh, is based on Père Jacques, um, who mm, was arrested for harboring. Guy. Okay, the the guy who's saving the uh, Jewish kids. Oh no, I to, love that guy. Oh, I, okay. Well, yeah. that's. I'm glad this is on the public record. Was so arrested wait, he was a for, real guy. Yes, was arrested for harboring them and sent to the concentration camp at Mauthausen. He died shortly after the camp was liberated by the U.S. Army, having refused to leave until the last French prisoner was repatriated. Forty years later, uh, Yad Yashim, uh, Israel's official memorial to the victims of the Holocaust, granted Pierre Jacques the title of Righteous Among the Nations. Mm. Righteous, eh? Mm. Is that the word they used? That is literally the word that they used. Okay. It's an, it's an honorific used by the state of Israel to describe non-Jews who risked their lives during the Holocaust to save Jews from extermination by the Nazis for altruistic reasons. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, again, this is another uh, very, uh, well, it, really well shot movie by Louis Maul. Really well made. He definitely has an aesthetic. Like he's got a he's got a, he's got a color palette that he uses a lot uh, for even like the clothes that he his costume design and stuff like that. Very similar. I mean, he's also used a lot of the time he's working with the same decade in the three movies we've watched because we basically are going between 1944 to 1954. So it's like a ten year window. Mm -hmm. uh, two World War II era movies in France, and then you have a 1954 movie in, you know, kind of a, whatever it is, Murmur of the Heartland, whatever whatever city that's actually taking place in. That's at, uh, what was the name? Oh, I, I look forward Ka to what Caspon? Gaspon. Peter Caspon. Is that what the, the name you said earlier? Gaspon? Peter Caspon? That's where it was. Dijon. Yeah, like uh, the like ketchup. <laughs> See what I did there, Jarrett? I know what you did there. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I would say that this is probably the best movie of the three. Okay. And... Uh... I don't know. It's always a it's a it's, a, it's always a tough thing when it comes to discussing the Holocaust and sure. the the the, impl the implications that this film only alludes to. It, it doesn't delve right into it. It's no uh, Son of Saul, where mm. you're they, you're right there on the fucking killing floor with an over the camera shoulder uh, ex uh, experience of uh, unimaginable horror. This is kind of like oh, no, it's just, this is the story of kids. Who get to uh, experience it off off panel? This is an off panel mm -hmm. version of it, but it is where these stories were told and where people are kind of left behind. Um, there was this there's this tension in the final scene uh, where like there's kids being lined up against a wall, but it's kind of for identification purposes. But there is this menacing vibe where you're like, oh, are these kids just going to get machine gunned down? That's what I thought. Yeah, I mean that's what you're supposed to, I think, feel, and that's probably what they were supposed to feel too, so they can take these take these people away. It's like don't think that we're like you can't do anything. Yeah. No. Yeah. And this rule, like, I think that's like that's what I took away from it. Uh, there might be yeah, a better and... there might be a better explanation of it of what that purpose was, other than making sure every single person was documented because this is the world of I mean of now of papers. Do you have your papers? Mm -hmm. comes from this and it's always this weird thing where people have to produce this little piece of paper passport and then someone mm. can look at it and all it takes is a person to just tear it up in front of you and it's like what are you going to do about it just like a qr code eh? just like a qr code that you can yeah. but you can just go home and go to your desktop printer and print off another one rj sure sure Full you can even make your own qr you can, you codes, can make your I've own heard. yeah because photoshop exists yeah. uh this is a different time and place where, uh, mm. I mean, your government-issued paperwork is, I mean, legally binding. I guess it would be, it's quite the thing. Since people were forging stuff, obviously. They were doing uh, old-timey Photoshop. Mm. And it was a real skill to forge these documents. And people paid good, uh, good money, good 1944 money um, to get it. So it's one of those things that you look back at and uh it's in movies it's kind of like a quaint thing I'm like well i mean look at that it's just like a piece of crap paper you, how, how hard was it to forge this stuff 
It's something mm. I, it's something I think about. Um, but yeah, I don't know. How does one rate your enjoyment of uh, kind of uh, sad stories? Rate it on a jam scale. The jam, on the scale of jam. What kind of jam would it be? Um, it's like it's 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 a strawberry. It's a strawberry jam. It's not like it's, it might not be my favorite, uh, which may be like a Smucker's. Uh, maybe it's like one below that, like an off-brand jam, I, strawberry, which is still pretty good. Like uh, artisan? No, that sometimes those are the worst ones. Oh, okay. too many weird chunky lumpy bits in there. I don't yeah. want. I don't want that. I'd uh, I'd I'd give you a curveball. I'd say it's like a marmalade. Uh, not a fan. Not for not for everyone. Not for everybody. Not for me. I, not for you. You yeah. you're not you're not down with the marmalade with Paddington. Uh, no, that's that's for bear Peruvian bears. Ah, yeah, shit, that's true. Yeah, that's their that's their uh, their business. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Um, RJ. Yeah. What did you think of Au Revoir Les Enfants? Les enfants? Reservoir Dogs too. Yep. Um. Well, this res- is this is the first one. Yeah. Oh, so Reservoir Dogs point oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Um, well, you know how I feel about Louis Maul. I don't. He's a weird old pervert, I think. Um, and not like totally weird and not totally a pervert, but I think he's an old pervert kinda. But he went through some stuff. Uh Murmur of the Heart, I was like, mm, I'm not with you, man. Uh for uh what was the movie I watched last week? Lacombe Lucien, I was like, mm. I'm not with you, man. Uh, not you, but Louis Maul is who I'm talking yeah. about, whether I was with him or without. Uh, and then uh, I watched this one and I was like, hmm, I'm with you, Lou. I'm with you on this one. I actually like this film, Drew. I liked it. It's been the first in, uh, I'm not going to say I loved it or anything like that, but it's the first in a long time that I was like, yeah, it was a good show. I liked it. I liked like the school setting with these guys just kind of growing together. Like there's, there's the obvious things like what you were kind of saying to where um, it's like, uh, well, it's a boarding school story and those kind of play out in similar ways. Like you have characters that fit like certain types and like, or like archetypes. You're just like, Oh, there's this kid. He's the bully. There's this kid. He's the shitty kid. And you're, and you're like, here's this teacher. He does this. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I kind of like that. I liked, um, I liked how the boys kind of like had certain roles and things like that. And then uh, I did like um, I didn't mind our main. He's not overly bearing and uh, like being like, I'm the good one here. He wasn't like pretentious or like um, obnoxious or anything. I was like, oh, he, he just likes to read and he ke- he keeps to himself, too. So I actually kind of liked I was like, he doesn't really do too much. And uh, our boy who gets brought in, uh, who's in hiding, like he also kind of fits that bill. So I was like, yeah, I can see why these kids would be rivals, but then eventually friends and things like that. Right. And um, I liked their kind of play. And I also like some of the school dynamics. Like there was that one kid that they they say his name all the time because he's always being like a little shit. It was like Bo- Bodamine or something, whereas always the adults, it's like Bodamine get out of there. It was like, it was always the same name. I kind of liked that. I thought it was funny. Uh, I liked it that the uh, Catholic priests yelled at those rich people during mass. I was like, Oh, that's cool. Um, you, you see some weird stuff like the bathhouses and you're like, Oh, bathhouses. Hey, that's what people had to do. Huh? Interesting. Yeah, they, they didn't have ch- uh, chopsticks to eat their chips. They didn't. They just had communal tubs where everyone was washing in there. And then that brush and the bar of soap just stays in there and you go, Oh dear. What's the last thing you use on the bar of soap and the first thing someone else uses? You know what I mean, Jerp? So anyways, there was that going and that was gross. Um but uh I liked I liked a lot of that. Um and I do like the the World War Two stuff. I I thought this was this was the one I thought it was most effective in because um when like with Lacombe Lucian you're on you're on the you're on their side, like the villain side. And you're like, eh, like, I know why, I know why people make stories like this to like show the other side of it. But I was like, but I don't like this guy. He's kind of a dink. I was like, I don't want to root for him. Mm -hmm. Where in this one, you just see like these kids and like, I I like some of the talks that kids have where 
like um, our main boy is talking to his older brother. And he's like, well, what does Jewish mean? And he's like, oh, it means they don't eat pigs. And he's like, is that it? And he's like, yeah, kind of. And he's like, and people don't like them for that. Like, you know what I mean? Like the, the kids, goodbye children, goodbye innocence, Jared. That's the uh, alternative title I'm, I was uh, made aware. Um, but I like that where the kids are just like, they don't really know. Except for like when that one Jewish guy comes into the bathhouse and the one kid's like, oh, can you believe this guy? And everyone's like, what? They're like, what do you know that we don't? Um, but uh, I liked how it was done here. And then, yeah, the last uh, the last like 10 minutes or so is is pretty like it's it's well done where they're searching through the schools. And um, I didn't think the tension like I wasn't super tense because I was like, I'm pretty sure they're just going to get them. So like I wasn't like tension anxious about that i was just kind of like i kind of just wanted it to be over you know it's like oh it's like get get it done now just get those kids and and go but um it is well done where they get kind of carted off and what they do with all the other people i was like oh yeah that's a it's a nice way to show that like showing what these these kids who don't know anything just like little kids seeing this stuff happening and they're just there to watch and then then when that's done it's like all right guys it's gym class now Get back on those uh, those battle sticks and uh, give it a go. So uh, I, I liked all that. I thought that I thought that was pretty well done. Battle sticks was cool. I thought the Joseph character was interesting. Um, they really shit on him a lot, uh, and so there's like a natural kind of story there. The only thing that I thought was like kind of strange was the mother relationship again. Like it's not overdone in this. Not like in Murmur of the Heart where you're like, mm. so it wasn't like that. But I was just kind of like, man. This guy's got a thing for moms, hey? This guy's a real milf lord. You know what I mean? What I mean, Jer? So anyways, I uh, I actually like this movie. I thought it was I thought it was good. I was like, yeah, I, uh, I was like, I'm on board with uh, what they're doing in this bad boy. It's um sad and depressing shit, but uh, it is um it's real life, but it's not like Lacombe Lucian, which is also real life, but just a bunch of dead animals all over the place where you go, oh. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I like this one. It was good. We, was see, good. we, we see some pigs. And there's the uh, some allusions to the fact that, well, they'll be eaten at Christmas. Yes. And, well, that's what they say, too, right? They're like, well, they're like, uh, they fatten them up all year for when it's parents' day. And that's then right. we, uh, to, to make it look as if we, uh, we are fed well all year kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then you go, oh, man. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's a good show. It's kind of sad. thought the boys were pretty good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, good movie. Definitely the best out of the three, I thought. And um, But I didn't really like the first two, so it's right. not... Uh, no. Well, I mean, not even dislike. Like, yeah, I, no, I mean, I didn't like them. I was kind of like, eh. Yeah, whatever. But this one's good, so... We we have a wiener, Jarrett. Finally. We have a wiener. You, you know want what I mean? to uh, hear from some people who aren't fans. I feel like that could be problematic. Yeah, we'll we'll try our best to uh, not step in that. Uh, let's yep. see here. How about Doctor Christmas? Okay. Half a star. I am so done with fucking French movies. Just done. You had your chance, France. Uh, would it blow your mind that one of his favorite movies is Leon? Isn't Leon a French film? Like mm-hmm. Leon the Professional? Isn't he French in that movie? Like Leon himself? Leon. Leon? Okay, so I got some... Here, Here's a, here's a bio for you from Dr. Christmas, Jared. Who am I? I'm just a guy who really really likes movies i, I love them more i, I think doctor, than food I, I feel like dr christmas might have been uh or like seven samurai guy at the beginning oh maybe. maybe i don't know if i was reading bios at that time maybe so uh he says i love i love them more than food i'm pretty opinionated but i try not to be snobby i enjoy all kinds of genres from something like starship troopers to the time traveler's wife i watch a huge variety of things but have a particular fondness of anime and its general gleefulness to go completely insane. 
Primarily, I watch movies to be entertained. If that criteria is met, I will review that movie favorably. Everybody else, or everything else is just icing on the cake. When I actually write something about a movie, it usually means it affected me in some notable way. The longer the review, the more of an impact it had on me. I'm not usually one for lengthy, in-depth reviews. So if you see one, it means it was a really good movie. And then I'm noticing they gave two stars to Hotel Transylvania Transformania. And uh, there's like a two paragraphs here. So They want to watch movies to be entertained, Jared. Can you believe it? Don't we all? How, believe... how about Maggie Brennan? Okay. One star. Could they have picked a worse uniform for the German soldiers? Was it not historically accurate? I don't know. I, I do notice this person is a big fan of F- the Fear Street series. Uh, yes. Yeah, five stars to some of those films, Fear Streets. What else we got five stars to? Uh, Lego movies, uh, the new Ghostbusters, uh, a bunch of the Santa Clauses, the Princess Switch, whatever that is. Um, let's go to some half-star films. Hamilton, The Lobster, Tenet, Nomadland. Memories, memoirs, or memories of a murder. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. And how about one more? P. Bellaney. Okay. Poor film for such a poignant subject. Lacked any real drama, and it was so predictable you were waiting for the guards to come from minute one. Unrealistic and lacking any real emotion. Um, I mean, not really. No five-star films, Jarrett. No. Zero. Some four-and-a-half-star films include Birdman, Mr. Turner, Cavalry. So this person was just a real big fan of movies from, like, 2014, apparently. Oh, yeah. They, they, it looks like they've stopped logging movies as well. Oh. <laughs> all, all they have is movies from 2014. I guess that's what it is. Yeah. Strange. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. It's the way she goes, bubs. It's the way she goes. Sometimes she goes, Jarrett. Sometimes she doesn't go. Yeah. Any final thoughts? No. No. Liked it more than all the other Louis Mao movies. Didn't blow any dicks off. Wow. Physically or metaphorically, but right. it's definitely better than some of those other ones. You know what I mean? Bird? Stupendous. Mm-hmm. After the break, um, I don't know. <laughs> We're going to look longingly and sad at that door, being like, that could be us. We could be walking out that door, and mm. this podcast is over. Is that happening to you? Looking at that door? Yeah. No. Sadly, I think there's a narration. So oh. he, he he would learn to he would soon regret it. Oh, all right. 